What's up, guys? How's it going on this uh, beautiful Wednesday? Everybody feeling good? Morning. Things are great, man. I'm excited. Fired up. I know. Same, same. We got a lot to cover today. Purdy, I like that beard, man. You look good with the. You look good with the shadow. Thanks, bud. Appreciate Frame it. His face out. Frame his face out a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> you look so purdy, man. Thanks, <laughs> That's right. <laughs> very, very fitting for you, Purdy. Thanks. My girl likes it too, so it's you know increase my closing. You know. Yeah, be careful with that. Hey, Rudick, looks like you're at the firehouse today, man. Yeah, I've got a, I've got a, the tornado alarm's going off behind me. So, so I was muting out. You can hear oh, it. Oh, wow. Man, I've always said, like, if, you know, you, you always kind of think about, you know, what, if I were, if, if I were to do anything else, what would it be? And I've always thought that if I, if I were in any other industry or business, that firefighting would probably be up there for me. I don't know why. I just, I, I think it's a really cool, um, seems like it, it would be a really cool culture. And like, um, I don't know, I just see like people sitting in recliners and, you know, playing video games and cooking and stuff a lot. But I also like the idea of jumping in there and, you know, especially like the, uh, the forest fires. Yeah. Do you do much of that or are you mostly structure? We don't get to do a lot of wildland fires. Um, I've got the certifications and things for that. Some of us end up going out to, uh, Colorado and California and, cool. and helping with those type of things. I'm a little busy. I'm busy on my days off building yeah. my business. So there you go. I, don't, uh, I don't partake in any of that anymore. I used to be on the rescue team and things like that, but it is fun. It's funny you say that because they're in there cooking lunch right now. So we're cooking food. I, we, you know, we were just yeah. in there uh, watching That's TV. cool, man. It's cool. That's really cool. That's a All right, guys. Well, we got a ton of stuff to cover today. Um, coming fresh off of a national conference, the best conference I think we've ever had. By far the most attendees we've ever had. We're still trying to drill into the data to figure out actually how many people were, were tuned in because while we were showing 8,000 at some points or more, uh, that was also just individual unique logins. And so some of you guys had watch parties with 150 people. Many of you were just sitting there with your your family of three or four, or you know, a small team or something like that. So, I mean, based on our 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 estimates, we feel like we were probably peaking at you know fifteen to eighteen thousand people um, across the board. So, uh, but, but beyond the attendance, I just think the actual conference itself. Um, you know, this was our first virtual conference, and I, I would chalk it up to a massive success. Uh, you know, as a lot of you know, uh, much of it was pre-taped. And I thought for me personally that I would find myself not as engaged because I've seen it, but I was so much more engaged the second time around even. Um, I mean, I think especially on day two, about halfway through day two, I, I, it was like tears for me and Sarah for, for like two hours. It felt like just ups and downs of emotions. It was so engaging. So I'm just super proud of, of uh, you know, of all of us as a company and, and what we were able to accomplish together and how everyone promoted it. So good work guys. Um, in fact, we got a little video we want to show here in a minute on that topic on the conference. So a little recap. Um, if you missed it, hopefully we're going to try to make as much of it kind of cut up as available as possible in various spots, but uh, hopefully you didn't miss it. Hopefully you're, you were joining us. Let's jump into some leaderboards, Joe. Um, and then we got some announcements and then we're going to move on to a really cool topic around investing since that is our word of the year. And we got a lot of energy coming out of conference. A lot of people wanting to know how do I lean in and invest in the business? So um, killer week last week, uh, top 10 new riders. Let's start week to date. We had Christina Quatraki. Uh, by the way, Brandon's on uh, a much needed vacation. Uh, you know, I went to Puerto Rico a few weeks ago, first actual vacation I'd taken it felt like an over a year many of you guys are probably in the same boat Brandon's uh, out the Grand Canyon right now so y'all are gonna have to put up with me today um, reading these leaderboards especially he's a pro at it he's got these names figured out we got um, Felix Torero at 6400 in premium Francisco Coronel at 28,000 good work man uh, and then we got Blaine Reeder on the month to date these, these are our new riders at 14,800 for the month uh, number two, Jennifer Wilson, great job, 16,700. And number one, again, Francisco Coronel, 28,000. It's a big one. 
And then we have top 10 producers overall. Uh, number three at Leah Dennison at 14.7. Jamie Soucy at 15.8. And again, I'm just going to apologize if I'm, I'm butchering any of these names. Francisco Coronel at 28,000. And then uh, we have number three month uh, for the month of March. Uh, Sean Hogue, $56,000 in personal production, killing it. Number two, Julia Mullins at 72,000 in production. And then number one, Brian Green at $73,000 in production for the month of March, killing it. Awesome. I think my best month ever of personal production was like 42,000. And I was just, you know, for me, that was on fire. So to get up in the seventies and eighties, like some of you guys get on a monthly basis and beyond is just, just baffling. Um, all right. This is the top 10 producers by app count. Uh, Ashton DeLang, uh, DeLango Lundy at 15 apps for the week. Number two for the week, uh, Michael Flores at 16 apps. And number one, Vincent Andriotti, and Andriotti at 16 apps. And then for the month, we had Virginia and Karina Castano at, at 39, always killing it. Diedrich Robinson, 47 for the month. And Harrison Zipkin, 56 apps for the month. Good work, Harrison. Love that name, Harrison Zipkin. All right, MedSup producers. I think it was one this week, Brian Broyles at 1339. More MedSup stuff to come. Number three for the month, Henry Barth, 1700. Uh, Derek Maddox at 2100. And number one for the month of March in MedSup, Brian Broyles, 2500. Good work, guys. Keep that train rolling. Uh, then we have disability income producers. So some standalone disability stuff. Alan Smith at uh, just under 1,000. Number two, Elliot Shorey at 1,500. And number one, William Berry at 1,570. Nice work. And then for the month, Jason Briggs, uh, or excuse me, Bridges at 2,600 in premium. Jamie Soucy at 2,692. And number one, Julia Mullins at 3,500. Good work. I can help you with that one. It's Susie. Superstar Susie. Susie. Okay. Thank you, buddy. Yeah, Jamie buddy. Jamie Susie. Yeah, y'all, y'all, please correct me. I definitely don't want to get these names wrong. All right, top five IUL producers. We had Leah Dennison at fourteen seven ninety. Good work. Number two at uh, Robert Glantz fifteen thousand seven sixty four, and number one Nate Offer. Good work, man. Getting out there and writing an app at thirty four thousand one forty one. I think that was an app. It may have been more. And then let's see for the month of March, Ryan Gaska at twenty nine thousand. Nice work on the IUL stuff. Number two, uh, Nate Offert, 34,141. And number one for the month, Sylvia Fox. Good work, Sylvia. Uh, $58,300. Good, good stuff. And then top five annuity producers. Hey, there's Doug Suttonfield at number four. Good work, Doug. Uh, Kayla Granger, 209. Michael Lidecker, this is for the week, a $300,000 annuity. Great work. And number one, Francisco Coronel. 1.2 million. Nice one, man. That is where that, that, uh, some of that, uh, APV production was coming in on some of the other leaderboards. So killer work. That's a good one. Those, those are out there all over the place where I was actually just, uh, reminded yesterday when we were with Ayers and Sicily for a minute about, about that, uh, million plus annuity he, he closed, just kind of fell in his lap. So they're out there. You just got to ask the questions. Um, Top five or uh, top three annuity producers on the monthly side it was a tie at number three with Greta Elliott Meredith and Lindsay Renelt at 400,000 for the month. Number two at Julia Weigman at 425. And number one, Francisco Cornell, 1.2 million. That'll do it. Good work on the annuity front. Um, Total, so these are the recruiting leaderboards. Uh, looks like we have tied for a second uh, three-way tie with Puckett, Cook, and Shinovar at five, and then Spildinner and uh, Nadu at six for the uh, week. Good work, guys. And then we also have uh, top direct recruits. Week today was Pogue at 18. Good work, man. Miranda Martin at 19 and Kevin Purdy at 20. And then we got debt-free life producers. We have Misty Hutton at 5,700. We have uh, Everett Allen at 6,000. And then we have Brian Dowler at 12,900. Good work. 
Yeah, free life also, as you guys know, with conference getting ready to pop um, some some big numbers again uh, on on this front. Victor uh, Arac Aracho at 20,122 for the uh, month of March. Samantha Colton at 25,000 in DFL. And number one for the month, Brian Hines, 26,249. Good work, Brian. And then back to licensed recruits, week to date, uh, Brock, Shank, and Nadeau at number two and number one. Good work, Nadeau, um, with five. And then top direct licensed recruits was Pogue, uh, Faulkner, and Purdy tied at number two. And then Miranda Martin at the top with 12 for the week. Good work. Um, new riders, yes. This is a good one. Jacob Pogue. Um, that was supposed to be Mike Rudick instead of Brian Dowler back there. Sorry about that. Had some names mixed up. Good, good job, Rudick. Um, Jacob Pogue and Andrew Jimenez. Hemi tied at number, tied at two with two. And then Carl Miller with four for the week and new riders. Some, something everyone, as you're building an agency, should be tracking. You should be tracking every single week and every single month how many recruits are joining the team and how many new riders and how many unique riders you have on your team. And th those numbers should, should be growing uh, month to month, but at the very least quarter over quarter. Um, and so uh, top direct new riders week to date for the directs, Carl Miller. And then we got Capistrano and Pogue tied for number two with seven and Purdy at the top with eight. Good work. Season new agents. Now this is for last week because we missed the call last week because we had our conference. So we didn't get to do a proper recognition of our season new agents. So welcome aboard. Um, good first, good first uh, step here. Uh, we have Tracy Bolton, David Loudermilk, Jennifer Wilson, Blaine Reeder, Alexandra Rose Beakley, Wakiria de Dios, uh, Brenda King, Christina uh, Bonner, Drake Babineau, Dustin Frederick Harland, Mary Vega, Raphael Ceratos uh, Cisneros, and Wendy Petty. Congratulations, guys. Welcome aboard. Sorry if I, if I butchered your name there. And then for this week, we also had a, 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 new, a new wave of uh, season new agents. It looks like we have Michael Bison, Felix Torero, Francisco Coronel, Kathy Brown, Alicia Hill, Heather Romero, Keisha Finley, and Walnetta Anderson. Welcome aboard, guys. Congratulations. Look, the thing about season new agents is if you can, if you can write if you can figure out how to write five or six apps, especially in that short of a time frame, you, it's all a matter of duplication at this point. That's what this business is so uh, has taught me early on. Was man, if I can do two, I can do four. If I can do four, I can do eight. It's just a matter of duplicating my efforts. So congratulations, guys. Now it's just a matter of duplicating that, continuing to lean into the activities that got those results. Um, so let's look at some of the, uh, the agency leaderboards. This is always one of my favorite parts of the leaderboards because these numbers just get a little, little out of hand, if you ask me. Um, Ryan Gaska at number three on the key leaderboard, 22,000 for the week. David Albero, 22,000. You know, to be an agency owner in our company, it's really only about 12,500 on a four-week turn-in. So to see key leaders, people who are striving to be an agency owner hitting $22,000 in a week at number three, like Ryan Gasket and David Albero at 22, almost 23,000. Y'all are, y'all are right in the sweet spot. Um, so keep it up. And then number one, Jordan Howe, 22,985. That was a close one at the top there. Good job. And then we have Ryan Gasket again for the month of 69,745. Uh, Christian Capistrano, good work, 83,220. Chip off the old block there. Joseph Carson at 98,096 for the month of key leaders. Good work. Y'all just like said, forget, forget the agency owner status of how much production I need to do there. I'm just going to blow right past it. Um, all right, so agency owners uh, for the week. In that category, we have Diane and Diane, uh, Dan and Diane Elmer at 33,872. Jerry Chote at 34,000. And Susan Adams at 34,679. Good work. And then for the month, the top three, uh, Mino Glick at 114, Dan and Diana Elmer at 125. And number one, Phil Robertson, 145. Good work. 
If you're brand new on the phone and you're wondering what this means, an agency owner is someone with our company who has duplicated themselves in volume. And so they've actually built an agency within the company, leveraging our systems, leveraging the support, leveraging the lead program. And so they're just duplicating themselves. But from a, from a financial standpoint, if you're wondering what, what these numbers shake out to, um, you know, it depends on their contract level, depends on their spread. It depends on a lot of different things, the quality of business, but, you know, kind of a rule of thumb. A lot of times I, I always saw in business was, um, if you take a guy like Phil Robertson there at 145,000 for the month, at the end of the year, you know, it's probably going to be around $150,000 of, of uh, passive income that comes from about $145,000 agency. Now, Phil Robertson had, uh, you know, if 30 or 40,000 of that was his own personal production, it may sway that a little bit, but generally what you kind of run on a monthly basis is around what you annualize on a um, profit basis annually. The good, the cool part is, is this, we're talking passive income, okay? Not as concerned with the amount of income in business. I'm more concerned with the type of income in business. So good job, guys. These guys are all getting a taste of that passive income. And then we have the leaderboards for agency director weekly. We got number three, the Hemi at 81,000, Larry Ann Griffith at 84,000, and number one, Melissa Weigel, 92,975. Good work, Melissa. And then monthly, Griff Martin, 335, killing it. Melissa Weigel, 424. So good to see this. And then Larry and Ann Griffith at 428. And that 100,000 plus a week mark is the sweet spot. That's where things get start getting really fun because you really start to multiply, you start to feel this uh, snowball kind of effect because at that level, you generally have to have one or two leaders. You've kind of developed and duplicated yourself from a leadership standpoint. And when you get running buddies like that, that's when things start to get easy. Uh, easier, I should say. Things just kind of start to, to pick up and all of a sudden it's easy to go from having 10 recruits a month to now 20 to now 30 or 40 recruits a month because you got more people helping. So the thing just kind of starts to multiply, which is the beauty of our business is you want this thing to go from addition to multiplication. Everyone else in the industry is playing addition. We play multiplication like this. All right. Regional agency director weekly. George and Janet Matthews, 66,000, good work. Brad and Kara Ganey, uh, 71,000, good job, guys. And number one, Tony Capistrano, godfather, 102,000 for the week, which brings us to the monthly. Number three, Josh Hershey, 281. Um, Trey Alderson Cloutier, uh, 287, good work, Trey. And then number one for the month, Tony Capistrano, 458. All right, managing vice president for the week. We have number three at, uh, I guess, uh, yeah, Mike and Sarah Pappas at 34,000. Scott Summers at 62,000. Darren Stubbs at 73,000. And then number one, managing vice president for the week in production, $76,000. And then for the month, we got Marlon Faulkner at 293. We got Scott Summers at 303. Good work, Scott. And then Darren Stubbs at 330,000 for the month. Work guys, managing vice presidents, senior vice presidents, and numbers start picking up here. Scott Mank, it's 116,000. Good work. Nate Offert, 151,000. And Colin Lisa Kimbrell at 159,000 for the week. And then on the monthly side, we got Jimmy James Spildinner. Good work, man. Nate Offert, 474. And uh, man, that was a tight one between Jimmy and Nate there. And then Kyle and Lisa, 737 for the month. Nice work. Y'all got you, you guys are going to be scaring that million dollars a month very soon. All right. EVPs weekly. Ashley Tarr at 224. Kevin Purdy, advisory board member, just like Ashley there at 273. And then Ryan and Michelle Miller, 334,868 for the week. So let's talk about the month. Tar at 1 million. Nice, breaking, breaking the million dollar mark. Kevin Purdy, 1.136. Killing it. 
And then Ryan and Michelle Miller, 1.5 million for the month. Nicely done. Uh, Kashawn, I see you there. 954. Killing it too, man. All of you guys. All right. And then associate partner for the week. Pogue at 342,000 for the week. And then Lynn Watkins, good job, brother. $550,000 for the week. Nicely done. Jacob Pogue, 1.4 for the month. And 2.3 million for the for the month. Nice, Lynn. All right, we have senior partner weekly, uh, Matt and Brad Smith at 298. Man, Danny, 296 right behind him. And then Eddie Pritchett. Good work, man. 746 for the week. And then we got for the month, we got uh Delaney there at 1.2. Man, tight race between, between those spots there. And then Matt and Brad Smith, the Wonder Twins, 1.293 for the month. And then Danny Young with a big old 1.5 for the month. And then Edward Pritchett for the month, $3.3 million in production. These are, these are video game numbers we're hearing, guys. <laughs> awesome. Oh, we missed that one. Let's look at that. Managing partner for the week. Marshall, not a bad week. I know you're probably disappointed that it wasn't that it wasn't a seven-figure number, but hey, eight forty-five is not a bad week. Especially, guys, keep in mind this is uh, this is kind of conference week too. So, uh, while it wasn't a live conference, there was still a lot of energy and attention put towards you know showing up, being there, that kind of thing. So we always take a, a little bit of a dip during conference weeks, but um, man, not not a bad dip at all this week for sure. Uh, again, one of the many benefits to a virtual conference. Um, and then Marshall Whalen for the month at the top, 3.712. Good work, man. That'll pay some bills. And then let's see, leaderboards directs weekly. Like Sean Monteith at 220. Jacob Pogue at 226. And Kevin Purdy at 273. And then directs monthly. Kashawn 954. Jacob Pogue 997. And number one, Purdy, number one direct, 1.136 million. Good work, man. February two, uh, 2021 top 10 bonuses. I love this time of the month. This is where we get to actually brag on all you guys getting your bonuses out there. So let's just look at the top February 2021 top 10 bonuses paid. Mind you guys, this is just bonus. This is not commissions that the actual insurance companies pay you, which is generally the lion's share of your income, these are bonuses in addition to money. So if you just look at uh, the total paid out in the 120 equity bonus was $653,000. Top three there was Linwood getting a check for 74,000 for the month, Eddie Pritchett at 97,000 for the month and Marsha Whalen for the bonus in February, $133,000 for the month. Crazy. And then uh, Purdy um, with the capital bonus, right? Uh, number We paid $48,000 in capital bonuses for the month of February, 2,200 to Purdy. Number two, Miranda Martin at 2,900. And number one, Kashan Monteith at 4,600. And then producer bonuses, 57,000 paid out in producer bonuses. Top three being Alicia Schwan, Schwan at 2,070. Sean Hogue at 2,297. Good job, Sean. And then Laton uh, Latonya James, 3,100. Good work, guys. Let's look at the breakdown of how these bonuses shaped up here. February bonuses paid out. A bonus of total paid out in February is $759,000. Equity bonus year to date, we've paid out $1.2 million in bonuses. Capital bonus, we've paid out almost $100,000, a little over $100,000 in a producer year to date. Um, so bonus paid year to date all in all, and this is just through February is $1.492 million. <laughs> That's crazy to even just say that out loud. Good work, guys. Nice job collecting some bonuses. We're going we're gonna to share with you guys how you can do more of that, how everyone on this phone can do more of that in the near future. Um, so I have a couple announcements um, here. First of all, uh, we have um, Carrier Webinar hosted by American Amicable. Um, doing business with American Amicable. That's Thursday, April 1st, April Fool's Day. No relation there, though. This is not a joke. There will be a call. 
and then tune in to the next sales training webinar with agency owners Elijah Carujo and Jordan Gillum on Get What You Want with Three Simple Steps. Uh, that's Monday, April the 5th at 12 p.m. Eastern. And uh, yeah, that's going to be a good one. Tune into that. A um, couple other quick announcements. First of all, we, um, we missed... We, we messed up on our awards ceremony just a little bit on, on a couple categories on the agency owner front. And so uh, next week, we're gonna try to do our best at reliving a moment at conference with our award show, just to kind of um, pay, pay honor and, and award uh, some of the names that we missed there. So make sure you tune in next week. Also wanted to mention that um, we, we have made an adjustment in our um, chief revenue officer role. As you guys know, um, a while back, we uh, hired Karsten uh, for that and wanted to make everyone aware that we've made a change there. We've let Karsten go. Um, you know, it, it became apparent rather quickly that, you know, there were just some misalignments um, in that position with, with him. And so we, we've made an adjustment. It was kind of misalignments on, on some core values and things of that nature too. And I, as you guys know, that's extremely important to us, but um, we, we've, we've made that adjustment and we'll keep you guys posted on, on, uh, on any future roles we we're bringing in on that world. So Joe, what next buddy? My PowerPoint. Right. I think, uh, next we've got something that we rolled out at conference that we're, uh, excited about, which is Quility yes. Sex. And I think that's why we got Mr. Rudicon too. I just want to set this up with you guys. Um, I, I know I mentioned it at a conference, but you know, a lot of, lot of credit uh, for this idea um, really goes to Mike Rudick. Uh, Mike, you know, you called me, what, probably a month before conference and, and said, man, I, I got something that I think can, can make a tremendous impact, especially in relation to our theme of level up with conference and what we're all trying to do um, to capitalize on what's coming in our, in our business in this industry. And, and um, you know, kind of had to do, you know, Mike, I'll let you explain it with some of the, um, uh, the 75 hard uh, stuff that, you know, you and so many others have done in our company that just had crazy transformational growth. But we just started kind of toying around with this idea of like, how do we bottle up what, what we're, what we're going to talk about at conference and level up and how do we bottle it up in this 60 day challenge type thing. So Mike, man, I really appreciate you bringing this idea to us. We've done things that are kind of similar to this in the past with like money, muscle, mind. Hey Mike, and if you end up having to go because of a tornado or a fire, then, you know, you don't need my permission to do that. I'm sure. But I just wanted to acknowledge that you are at the fire station today. So. I am. Um, but Mike, we've done stuff like this before. And, you know, I think when we last did our money, muscle, mind thing, where we kind of, as a community in our company kind of came together, we all, there was accountability in the air. There was, you know, there was camaraderie around these challenges that we've done. And, you know, the first time we did it, we, man, the, the, the results that we got from just all of us kind of working on something together was tremendous, even on just like the, the health side of things, it felt, I think we probably lost at least two tons of weight collectively as, as, a, as, a, as a company. So um, Mike, why don't you uh, roll for five minutes if you, if you can on our Quility 60. We got one day, it's March 31st right now, this starts April 1st, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're right on top of it. Um, yeah, you're gonna give me five minutes. Sorry, we actually just, I told the guys that I was gonna be off of the, uh, off of the um, truck here for like 30 minutes and they just caught a house fire um, oh, over wow. here. <laughs> it's a district, it's a district fire, an oven fire. I mean, just came in right as you started reading that. Are you good? So, no, I'm good, I'm good. I set it up, I set it up with, uh, I had another okay. guy driving the truck for me, but that's okay. what that all was right there. Uh, okay. I mean, as soon as you pull this light up, I got my stuff, <laughs> boom, house fire. That's the way it goes sometimes, you never know. Yeah. Uh, you, you never know what's going to happen, but um, yeah, grateful, grateful to be here, guys. I'm, I'm super pumped. Um, my timer didn't start yet, Casey. It starts now. Okay, I know you give me five minutes on this deal. Super, super pumped about this. Um, this is kind of my life, you know. I, I'm uh, symmetry is my passion, but also, you know, I'm a fireman. I'm a second generation fireman, and um, really through being a fireman, I have been put in several situations that um, grew my mental toughness. 
and it uh, it really taught me how the blessing of being in uncomfortable situations and really having to decide really who you are in that moment um, has has given me the ability to take that to other parts of life. And so being involved with that 75 hard, um, and there's several other people that have done that. And it's, it's been completely transformational for people. I mean, transformational insight, bodies, body, mind, spirit, the whole person theory. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's what we're going to do here. We're going to, we're going to get, uh, this is not just me. I know some of you know me, Michael gets crazy about running around in the rain or lifting things up and putting them down. And this is a whole person deal that can absolutely change your life. I know Heather Faulkner just completed this structure. Bev Frazier has lost, um, a ridiculous amount of weight, um, and changed herself inside and out, um, on a structure that's just like this, everybody. Mm -hmm. Now I'm not going to go down through here. You guys can read, um, kind of, I don't have to go through each one of these, but one of the things that I want to, to just highlight, uh, real quick, and I think we're going to talk on it some more as we go is this is a place, and this is what symmetry does. This is symmetry has always shown what's possible. Okay, and we're adequate to the walk, right? That's where the variable comes in. Symmetry goes out there and says, hey, here's a new life. Here's a new, here's a new way of thinking. Here's new relationships. Here's new equity here. Okay, now are we adequate to the walk of where we want to be? That's really the question. And that's really, so what is this? This is a, what does a great company and a great coach do? A great company and a great coach, they cannot make you self-discipline. They cannot make you mentally tough. But what a great coach and a great company is going to do is they're going to give you a structure to operate inside of that is going to develop these things in you. Yep. Okay? And they're going to take the time to put all these things together. This thing, people, people should really think about whenever you're looking at the, at the reading, think about um, the knowledge that you're going to gain over the next two to three months by reading, uh, by reading these books. Think about how grateful your heart's going to be whenever you reach out to that somebody that you, that you send an encouraging text to. Think about the physical movement and the water that you put in your body, the sunshine, and what that's gonna do to your overall uh, day. Think about how eating clean and committing to a discipline with a system is gonna seep into all areas of your business. Think about how plugging into what the tools and resources that Symmetry has given us here with Quility 60, with your family here, with healthy accountability, this is a way to level up. So, I'm, so that's, that, that's what it is, basically. You guys can read what the challenge and things like that is. We're going to keep that in front of you. So now I'm going to tell you three reasons of why you should do this. Okay, the first one is I believe that our symmetry business, for probably all of us, is the fastest growing appreciating asset we have right now with what the owners and what everybody has put in place and the structure of this and the nature of where this company is, this is the fastest growing appreciating asset on your balance sheet right now. It has to be. We've got a, we've got a quick trip chain here in Tulsa. And if you have them in the right corner, you're going to get paid. Okay. Cause if they want that corner, they're going to buy it. Okay. That's what you've got here in symmetry. So if that's what we've got, we may think to ourselves, okay, how do I, how do I, monetize this how do i build value in this i feel like i'm not enough i feel like i'm not capable how do i get traction how do i break plateaus how do i level up in my life this is how you do it this is how you create yourself whenever you're asking yourself the question am i adequate to the gift that's being laid at my feet with this business opportunity if you're asking yourself that if you're worried that that maybe i maybe i i don't have what it takes to step into the potential that this opportunity has for me in my life, I'm telling you, this is your toolbox. This is the way to do it. You will go through this program and come out of it a completely different human being. You will make decisions different. You will will process struggle different. You will look at at bad things that happen differently. Whenever you work out, because you're gonna miss a day and it's gonna be day 32. And it's going to be 11 o'clock at night and you're going to be like, ah, oh, I didn't do this. I didn't do my workout. And you go walk on the treadmill or do jumping jacks or whatever it is that you're going to do that day for 45 minutes. I promise you, you will never be the same whenever you, you realize who is truly in control. 
So that's the biggest thing is this is the way to level up, step into the biggest opportunity that is going to come along so far that you have with this appreciating asset. The other, the, the second thing is anybody from top to bottom, top, top of this company to the bottom, we've got people at the top of this company, you need to do this. You need to do it. You know you need to do it and you need to lead by doing. Your people are gonna do what you do. You've gotten satisfied. Marlon and I were talking the other day about the Eric Thomas video that came out about the best time to kill an alligator right after he eats. Some <laughs> of us have gotten too satisfied. Some of us are, can still level up, right? The people at the, at the, at the uh, bottom side of the company just getting started, getting figuring these things out, you absolutely need to do this. This is one of the most important things of being a new agent that you could possibly do to leave the old person behind that brought you here and the new person that's gonna take you where you wanna go. Okay, we've gotta change. So that's, that's the next thing, let's lead by doing. Okay, third thing is, and I'll be quick here. This is huge. I work and coach with so many people that they don't know how to win. Like they don't, they just can't, like they're just, my, Michael, I just don't like, I don't know where to get traction like I had. And so they're always playing defense in their life. Okay. And then, so if, if, if I play chess a lot with the guys here at the station, well, this, I played this one guy, the rules of chess, he's always getting my king in check, which makes me so mad because if the rule, the, the, the rules of the game, you get my king, I lose. And so he's always putting my king in check. And whenever he starts doing that, he's not only playing his side of the board, he's playing my side of the board. And he's making me move. And I want to move this piece over here, but I can't because he's making me move my king. And yeah. so that's life. Like if life is always reacting, making you react, and you're always reacting to life and you're not happening to life, life's always moving your king, putting your king in check. And you're like, Michael, how do I get – how do I get out of defense and back on offense? This program right here, this is how you play offense, guys. This is how you get your life heading and leaning in the right direction every day is these simple commitments to consistency over a defined period of time. Your business, your relationships, and your life will be differently, will be different. And so... That's why I'm passionate about it. I can't wait to get into this thing. We're starting tomorrow. Um, if anybody has, I'm going to jump in the Facebook group. If anybody has any questions about, you know, well, can I do this? Well, can I do that? Um, I'll, I'll be there to Love mitigate it. as much of that as I, as I can. And Thank you, man. Uh, we're going to rock and roll. Thank you, buddy. We're going to get more of Mike Rudick and others who have done similar things to this and just keep everyone kind of filling the 60 challenge with us. We're all doing it behind the scenes. Myself, Brandon, Meredith, Sarah, a lot of people here at the office, Pope, everyone's, everyone's committing to this. And we're really excited because we've done things like this before. In fact, a lot of you don't know this, but um, I used to, I used to, um, I was at my heaviest, I was like 180 pounds and I'm five foot six. So that's, that's a, um, I wouldn't say that's in shape. That's just a shape. <laughs> And that shape was fairly round, it felt like. Um, <laughs> and how I, uh, I would just speak for myself on that, that transformation um, from, from a health standpoint, and overall that also you know, affects your mind, it affects your energy, it affects so much of your life, um, was with something very similar to this where I just stuck to a plan and it was something that I kind of designed. You know, When you talk about like follow the diet of your choice for me, and I don't want to get into the details of, of it all. It is what it is for you. But for me, it was just like limiting my sugar. It was like 25 grams of lesser sugar a day. You know, when you really think about how sugar affects your, your actual health, it's, it's a terrible drug. And like, I was probably consuming three, four, five times the amount of sugar in a day that most humans should consume. And the thing is, that's most of us like a can of Coke is a, you know, 40 grams of sugar or whatever. It's like, that's your daily intake. That's all you should be having at most, if that. And so it was just kind of understanding some of those things. And same thing with like your water intake. Um, you know, as you guys know, recently we've jumped on just all, all kind of being on this bandwagon with the water jugs and, and trying to get enough water in for the day and how important that is in your health and your mental clarity. We adjusted that to a half gallon, Mike. <laughs> um, 
just because there, there are some safety concerns, I think in some cases with a gallon of water, especially maybe you're, you know, maybe you only weigh a hundred pounds or a hundred, you know, you can drink too much water. So do some research on like your weight and, and, and some of that, we wanted to kind of be, be a little bit safe with that, but all of these things, it's, it's, it's mind, it's, it's, uh, it's body, it's all of it combined there. So we're really excited about it. Anything else you wanted to say, Mike? No, no, that uh, I laugh, you know, cause we talked about those things. If, that there's a lot of like Bev, Bev Frazier, she, she, I mean, she's this tall and she crushed that gallon of water. You know, <laughs> yeah, you mean like but some of you, but here, that's why I don't want, don't you full grow men out there try and get out of drinking the water you need to be drinking. Drink, a, drink I mean, you know, I can tell the difference. I, I have, I've drank anywhere from a half gallon to a gallon of water. And I can tell the difference when I get up over a half gallon for me. Oh, me too. But, oh the know, inflammation and the focus and the different things yeah. that you're going to get through this that would just put what water will do to your, yeah. your back pain, your joint a pain. Lot, a lot of new science on it. But again, too right. much can start flushing some of the minerals and salt and stuff you need. So I know I, I work with a, a personal trainer some and He's very big on water. He texts me every day. How's your water intake? How's your, what's your pee color? He asked me a lot, yeah. which is kind of weird, but a yeah. lot of it he wants to know is what kind of sodium is still in my system. So he wants me to kind of sprinkle some sea salt in my water if I'm going to consume yeah. a lot of it. But anyways, that's beside the point. We're excited about the Quality 60. Um, we're going to dig in more with you, Mike, and others and uh, keep everybody on the train with us. It's going to be fun. Super pumped. Thank you, buddy. Yep. All right, Joe. And let's let's get a conference recap. Let's relive this moment for a second before we dig into the topic that we're getting ready to dig into because I think they just really kind of go hand in hand. Sounds great. Let's cue it up, team. All right. start with symmetry I was not convinced that it was going to be the right fit I said oh I would do just about anything right now what is it and he said it's insurance and I said insurance things are bad but they're not that bad <laughs> to be here in this industry with this company is a godsend for all of us I remember thinking that I'll never have success ever We've all heard that hurt people hurt people and free people free people, but you can't free people if you're hurt, and we all are in some way, so get your crap right, suckas. Yeah, I don't know who's watching. I don't know why you're watching, but what if this is your second shot at life? What if this is it? No matter what your background is, whether you're a student, a preschool teacher dropout, corporate executive or whether you're looking for part-time or full-time, the only limitation that you have in this opportunity is you. With every breath we take, every thought we think, every decision we make, in this very moment, you are becoming something different than you were in the moment before. I'm not saying that I'm Batman, I'm just saying no one's ever seen us in the same room at the same time. <laughs> I wonder what if this conference, what if this is your second chance? Turn your I shoulds or I hoods into I wills. Because face it, there may be a day when you just physically can't do those things anymore. I believe your next chapter can be your best chapter. I believe anyone can win here, and I believe that's you. How's everybody doing? I was made to be great. Babe, what are you doing? Sorry. We have a little nervous. We got all these agents from oh all gosh. over the country here. Sorry, you go ahead. It would take me 15 years of bartending to put in my bank account what Symmetry did last year. Now, I don't love money, but like I said, I hated being broke. <laughs> but money pales in comparison to freedom. Am I where I thought I'd be? Heck no, man. I want to give away 90% of everything I make, live handsomely on 10% of it. I'm on my way, man. We get to grant wishes for the Make-A-Wish Foundation. We get to build wells for charity water. I've said it before, but I hope you all listen to me that it's important to design your life that will allow you to dream like you'll live forever. But being so intentional that every day could be your last. 
serve greater, dream bigger, inspire more, work harder. This company is getting ready to level up. And we all have the chance to be part of something special. Are you ready? Wow. Again, in, in tears over here. <laughs> That's a dang good recap video. Um, all right, let's jump into the call, guys. On that note, let's talk about um, let's talk about how to capitalize on what we all just experienced with conference, the timing of the company. Um, everything going. I got a good uh, a list of panelists here um, to, to help with this topic today. Um, but I just kind of want to set it up first. As you guys know, you know, we have the word of the year, which is invest. We haven't got to really dig into that with everyone. When I was on my break in, in Puerto Rico, you know, the, the thing that comes from just a week off sometimes is a clarity, you know, and you kind of zoom out a little bit and you start thinking about, you know, um, start thinking about the past and you start thinking about, you know, how we grew our company. And even from the very early stages, what were some of the things we did from an investment standpoint that really paid off? And what were some of the bonehead investments that we made that got us in trouble and, you know, wasted our time, energy and money. And so that was kind of the premise is how do we, how do we kind of take the energy from conference and since we have so many people coming to all of the leaders in the company saying, tell me what to do now, tell me how to invest, tell me how to actually capitalize on this opportunity, that's what this call is about. Um, and so I want to go back to various phases of y'all's business, you guys that are, that are with us today, and how do we invest our time, energy, and money, and, and, and talk about the, the, some of the good investments and talk about some of the not so good investments and the downright bad investments that, that each of us had in each of those categories. Um, and I will just also say that it was incredibly hard to uh, pick, pick, the, uh, pick my help out for this call, the panelists, just because, you know, I don't think there's a company in this industry. I, I don't, I shouldn't even say, I think, I know there's not a company in our space, in our industry that has as many really good investors um, as we have. We, there's not a company in our space that has as many mid and deep six-figure income earners as this company. There's not as many seven-figure, there's no company out there that has as many seven-figure earners as we have. And again, it's not just the amount, it's the type of money that these guys are earning. It's passive Passive is the only time when you get that reoccurring passive income is the only time when you truly start to experience a taste of time and money at the same time. It's always what we're trying to drive people for. I don't want to put Purdy in this hot shot sales position where he's making $350,000 a year working 40, 50 hours a week selling insurance because the moment he can't do that anymore or the moment he gets tired of doing that, which does happen. Purdy's off somewhere else. Like I don't want put, to put the golden handcuffs on like that. And so it's about the type of income and you have to make the right type of investments to get the right type of income. So that's why I wanted to have these guys on, but there are so many others in this company that are earning the type of money and the amount of money that, that you out there want to earn. Chances are it's your mentor or someone, someone above that. Um, and man, I just think it's, it's one of the best investments you can make in yourself is to get around the people who are earning the, the type and the amount of income that you're after and just soak it in. And that's kind of what today's, today's uh, call is about. Um, you know, and I always think about this. Uh, I don't know if you guys, Purdy and Pogue and Pritchett, the, the three Ps today, I don't know if you guys think about this, but especially early on, I always thought this. <clears throat> How is it that uh, how is it that you can take two very competent people, start them at the same exact time at the same exact business, and one of those people five years later will be earning five hundred thousand a year, and the other will be scratching a hundred thousand a year? You know how is that? And I always think about it. It's like, man, if I could just follow that person and see what they're doing in their day, and I could do the exact same thing. And when they get money in their account, I'm going to invest it the exact same way. And when they have energy, I'm going to invest the same exact energy. Like I want to, I, 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 it's, it's, to me, it was always about best copycat wins. 
How do I get that information? Because that's what it is. That's what Purdy and Pritchett and Pogue and so many others in our company, it's just an investment. It's how they're, it's how they're investing their time, energy, and money. And if you can emulate that and get very close to it, you'll get a very similar result. Okay. Um, so I also think it needs to be said before we get started that without something that's driving you, then there's not going to be a consistent discipline in how you invest any of these three things. And so the first question that you should be asking yourself today, if you don't have that drive is what is it that's driving me? Because, you know, if it's just about paying the bills or getting out of debt, that's going to be short lived. It's probably not something that gets you up without an alarm clock in the morning. There's got to be something else that's driving you. Each of us on this screen has something that drives us. Um, and, and so I, I don't know how to give you that. Um, other than maybe to ask you guys really quickly, maybe to start off with, is just to describe the result now, what things feel like now that you have made that investment. Like, is it worth it? If someone's out there and they're struggling with that drive component, maybe you guys can just spend a couple minutes, um, you know, just a minute each kind of talking about that. Um, Purdy, you want to go first? And first of all, I will just say with, with the three guests that are on the call, um, again, uh, th these are people, in my, uh, in my opinion, that have been some of the, the, the best investors we've had in the company. Um, again, they have a, a, whole, a whole roster full of other people in their, in their business that are making great investments too, but, um, but they've also made the bonehead mistakes just like everyone else. So I thought it would be a good um, a variety show of good, the good, the bad, the ugly, Kevin. So <laughs> uh, why don't you kick off a little bit with that? Like, how are things different for you now? Um, and it has it been worth it? Uh, you bet, Casey. Thank you, Kevin Purdy, direct to Lynn Watkins, direct to Symmetry. Um, you know, myself being on this call, it's just really a reflection of my team and just working with some dynamite people um, over the past nine years that have, have uh, really um, loved up Symmetry system and excel with it. So just, you know, it's a team, team effort team event and I'm um, just really glad glad about that you know how life is different is is having a bunch of rock stars on a team that you have more time you know one of the things that propelled me is you know I've said it before is like what holds so many people back is just being good you know hey I'm good living outside DC for 20 plus years we saw this a lot like hey I'm an E blah 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 15 I'm making 150 grand I got three weeks off I'm good and we all have heard it before, being good a lot of times can hold you back from being great. And being in adventure sports and pushing myself and racing, I, I wanted to excel and be the best you know, version of myself. And what really propelled me was, and fueled me is fear. Like I, didn't, I didn't want to come a time where looking back over my life, the shouldas and the couldas, like why didn't I? I should have done that. And so, you know, how life looks different now this week, you know, having four kids, that definitely can propel you. Having some overhead, having some people you got to, you know, take care of outside of yourself. You know, I've, I've you know, joked before, you know, I could sleep on a park bench prior to Kyle Purdy, my firstborn being born. But once he showed up on the plan, I was like, oh, okay, now I got to get to work. But, um, you know, having four kids, having that overhead, and it's a little bit, for me, it's like ego. Like I wanted to be that that father figure, like dad, dad and mom played the game right. You know, mm -hmm. he went for it, they provided good lifestyle. We hear a lot of Americans, you know, with everything going on, that they might not grow up or or get to a different level higher than their parents. They're actually, it's actually going backwards. Um, so you know, I have a, my daughter turned 16 this month. She needs a new car because I'm or needs a car, period. I've been driving all over, picking her up to practice here, this and that. And just the, the opportunity to go out and buy a car for her. Yeah. And she can have that lifestyle. That's one thing that's just immediate this week that, you know, sitting in the that's dealership cool. buying a car. That's good. Pogue, same thing, man. Yeah, man. Life is just. Um... It's completely different. This company's changed my life. I mean, you hear everyone say it. Um, first of all, Kevin, you, 
like that picture behind you is one that you see on, on Facebook or you see out, it looks like just a really awesome picture where you could put it on your wall and you could hope to what, like, that's so cool. People get to do that. If I'm not mistaken, that's you in the picture, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's me. And this is my uh, other good buddy here, Edward Pritchett right here. Right, right. right. So I would say life's a little bit different for you jumping out of helicopters. And Edward, I can't hardly see you because of the sun in the background. Like you're in Puerto Rico, another house. Like what this company has done for us is absolutely incredible. And it's not just eight years into this thing, like to where my life is great now, Casey. Yep. The first year here, this company changed my life. I tell people every Monday on our team, new agent welcome call that if that's all this company gave me, was year one where I was making a hundred grand a year, which was enough to like put me over the edge where I wasn't going backwards anymore. Yep. And I got to go to bed with my wife every night of the week. 14 years prior to this, I didn't get to do that. Like that was life changing. Well, then we grew, you know, and grew and, and found great people, like you said, Kevin. And now my life's unrecognizable. I, I literally, man, Stacy and I were just on the way home today talking from the store. And I'm like, this is a dream. This is a dream. Man, and I, you know, those that are close know that it's not, this is about so much more than money. But I think it's important if you're on the line today to understand what the potential is. And we went from making $80,000 a year bartend and being buried in debt to last month, we put $140,000 or Symmetry put $140,000 into our bank account. I think you, you know, got something to do with that too, Jacob. <laughs> We're building our dream pool and, and like not, we didn't build our dream pool in year one or year two or year three or year four or year five or year six or year seven. Like, yeah. cause I needed to, I, I wanted to invest back into this thing to help more people, to grow things, to get it to stable, man, this is just, it's been amazing. And I've had different things that have driven me along the way. First, it was to get out of bartending. Then it was to get Stacy out of her job. Then it was just to help other people achieve some of the same level of success we have, man. But it's been such an incredible ride and the friendships that we've created. Um, that's life changing in and of itself, being able to hang around, you know, top performers and just good hearted people. Yeah. And that takes an investment too. You know, it's an investment in, in relationships. So that's good stuff. Pritchett, same thing, man. Is it worth it? Well, I mean... <laughs> Well, first off, uh, Edward Pritchett, direct to Symmetry Financial Group. And just so I say that because I'm just I'm grateful for, I mean, so many things, big and small. Um, and what, you know, if I'm watching this, you know, whether I'm a new agent, an agent who's been with us for a year or two, five years or, you know, 11 years, obviously, it's the max that you could have been here. Um, but at any point um, that you are with the company right now, what I, I look at this as is, this is the nature of investing. Uh, I was just kind of look, looking up some numbers, um, you know, uh, while I was, I was thinking about this, but, you know, everyone talks about uh, Warren Buffett and, and Berkshire Hathaway um, and how much he's grown that over the years, right? Like 1964 was when, um, and I want to look it up because I know people would fact check me and stuff like that. So I wanted to make sure I was right. But 1964 was when the, the Berkshire stock uh, was released. And if you had taken $10,000 in 1964 and invested in that, to, in 2017, at the end of 2017, that $10,000 would have been worth more than $240 million. All right. And I say that because and, and I really don't think this is hyperbole here, but like with what we have here at Symmetry, we can take a relatively small amount of investment and that it doesn't all have to be money. It can be time as well. That's the beauty of our system and actually invest. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. And guys, if we look 50 years down the road, like it's gonna be worth millions upon millions upon millions of dollars. And here's why it's not just because of what Symmetry is gonna do, but it's because of what we learn as we go through this and what we're able to take this, this ATM machine that is Symmetry and then go out and, and, and reinvest, reinvest back into our Symmetry business, reinvest into the homes that we buy, reinvest into other people's lives. The value that we're gonna be able to add, I do believe we'll be able to trump what 10,000 
just in Buffett's front, because that was just putting it in the stock and letting it sit. What we get to do is use the multiplier that is human ingenuity, the, 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 the leverage that we get from all the people that are here at Symmetry that continue to grow and, and build this thing, where we get such an outsized return on our investment. So yeah, today looks a lot different than it did 10 years ago when I put my first $250 into some leads or got on the phone, Kevin, for you know a, a, a 8, 10, 12, 15 hour day doing whatever I needed to do to make it happen then. All that investment 10 years later, it's paying off in spades. And guess what? All it's gonna do is keep on going and keep on growing. Um, so it's it's amazing what we have the opportunity to do here at Symmetry. And I hope people will listen and, and really take notes on, on these practices that we, we've gone through. We've, we've done it wrong. Like you said, good, bad, and the ugly. Of course, I'm the good. So y'all can decide who the <laughs> other two are. are. But, uh, <laughs> but I mean, like it's it's been able to take the, the, the stuff that we've done wrong. And now if you listen to this and you heed our words, like you don't have to do that. You get to go make some new mistakes because sure, you'll still make some mistakes, but you don't have to make the same ones and you can get there faster, quicker, more stress free. So that's that's what I'm excited about as we dig into this call today. Love that. And I'm glad you mentioned that, you know, it's not just about a money investment. In fact, that's the last thing we're going to talk about. It's time and energy to start with, because, you know, another reason why I wanted the three of you guys on is because for the most part, um, you know, we all all of us together, uh, just like many of our leaders, really didn't have a ton of money to invest in this business. You know, we didn't come here with five hundred thousand dollars in in, in uh, investment capital. We didn't go out and get business loans. You know, just many of our people were just like bootstrapped to 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 you know getting some skin, you know, and then starting to reinvest that. So we're going to try to kind of water it down to what what some of those early days were like too, and the good investments. But you know, I, I think you guys nailed it too with the timing because not only is just this business in itself, like the idea of taking a couple hundred dollars in leads and turning that into a couple thousand and then taking that couple thousand and reinvesting into building an agency where a base shop can spit out 10, 15, 20, $30,000 a month or more of passive income. Like there's no business out there that I've ever seen that's even come close to touching what this business touches. With a, with a $50 insurance license in a week, and then I can duplicate myself in that and all the insurance companies are paying all the commissions and I'm not having to. And then you take that, the industry itself and the market that we're in, and then you put it, put it in the same context with the fact that the company also is going to eliminate a lot of the headache, a lot of the work, a lot of the support, all that stuff that you potentially could cost you a lot of investment, time, energy, and money. All of that's taken care of. And so there's no better investment. But with the timing and the company going through what we're going through, we're going to be investing. We've already invested millions. We're getting ready to dump another 20 million in over the next 18 to 24 months into this company, into tech and innovation. Everyone gets to piggyback on that. And because now with the ears, that's what I mean by piggybacking on that is even at the, the entry levels of this program, all of you guys out there not only are getting the ROI on just the normal business, but you're getting a multiplier on jumping in with the growth and the equity in the entire company. And keeping in mind like that, that the ears, you know, being on a triggering event, whether that be an IP, you know, going public as a company or, uh, you know, bringing on a strategic partner or something like that, that's just base one. You know, there's, that's just first base. Like we got second base, third base, home run. Like that's just what catapults us into the atmosphere. And so whether you could be brand new on this call, never heard of ears before the equity appreciation rights. This still is so like the timing of this is so important for everyone right now with where we are. So let's lean into this. Like Edward said, get your pens and papers out and let's take some notes on the good, the bad, the ugly, as far as investments go. Let's start with time. Um, you know, so you got to invest your time in things that are going to drive the best return. You know, I think a lot of times we will mistake. Um, I did certainly, I, I mistake movement for achievement. You know, it felt like I was working and I was, I was studying up on my products. I was, you know, doing practice presentations. I was, you know, studying up on the phone scripts. I was, you know, wanting to make sure I knew a lot of stuff and, you know, 
what I wasn't doing was the actual things that put money in my bank account, the actual achievement stuff. And so you know, I think that's an important place to start with, you know, and, and just setting this, the stage or the table for you guys that it's really selling and recruiting. Those are the most important tasks, especially if you're brand new with us right now. It's selling and recruiting. High levels of personal production allow you to replace yourself to the extent that your only time now is spent in these high dollar activities, high return activities. That was what I wanted to do from day one is I knew that when I was on the phone booking appointments, when I was running appointments or when I was recruiting and leading, I was in this $100 an hour, $200 an hour type work. That's what I was worth. I could take my income at the end of the year and extrapolate it out and say, this is what I'm kind of worth per hour when I'm in the field. And so when I spend time doing administrative stuff, you know, client follow-up, some of the, the stuff that's highly important and a lot of times urgent, when I fill a lot of my time and energy up with that kind of stuff, I'm I'm kind of robbing myself. I'm doing $20 an hour work potentially, or even 10, eight or 10, $15 an hour work when I could be doing more 100, 150, $200 an hour work. So I was always trying to find a, a way to replace myself, to duplicate myself. So you're going to hear that kind of common theme a lot um, with everyone, but, you know, and that, that didn't just go with business tasks for me. That went with mowing my lawn and with things like that. If you're saying like, that's therapeutic for me, I just want to do it. That's great for me. Like mountain biking is more therapeutic than mowing my lawn. So if I'm going to sub something out, it's probably going to be mowing my lawn. Um, but that's kind of the mindset that I think a lot of people need to get around when it comes to in investing time. Like how can I do more of the high dollar an hour stuff and less of the, the lower dollar an hour stuff? Purdy, why don't you kick off with, with kind of your time do's and don'ts there. <laughs> Definitely. You know, um, one of the things you mentioned about not coming into the business without a war chest of money to, to, to get into the B quadrant, um, Lynn said, you know, hey, look, you can win here with activity. And listening to Jim Rohn talking about like, you know, we have top sales agents here in the company that it might take them, you know, eight hours to book 15 appointments. But if you're brand new right now and, and you can you can win here. You can beat that person with activity. Meaning it might take you 30 hours at the end of the day to book 16 appointments. But at the end of the day, you, you, you can compete with a top producer. So yep. um, your time and how you manage it and, and how you value your time is so critical to success here. Um, you know, it's this, we all, we all start out in the S quadrant here, sole proprietor. And we all want to play in your in your zone, which could be the business quadrant, the investor quadrant. And how you gain enough momentum to make that jump is you have to work a lot. And depending on what what your goals are, I'd get with your agency manager, owner, and, and really figure out like, okay, what type of income you're looking to make and what are you willing to sacrifice? What, what are you willing to give up to do that? So uh, myself personally, um, I came in here and I was working, you know, 12 hours plus 14 hours a day. So I had enough appointments to generate enough sales, enough income to make it. I started out part-time. I was here two weeks. Um, so 15K my first week, 12K the second week. And I saw the money. I'm like, okay, I can do this full time mm -hmm. and, and quit. And six weeks later, I took a 12 12, 10 day, 12 day vacation. So I didn't, I didn't spend enough time in the S quadrant. I had, I had kind of that ego. Yeah, I'm a business owner, mm -hmm. but then all of a sudden I, I reverted back to employee time. Like, yep. Hey, I've worked, I've, I've, I got good at my time. I'm selling. And then two weeks off and this business is like going away for two months and the pipeline. And so I created a lot of my problems early on by, not valuing the momentum. Um, and, you know, so for me personally, um, it was, Casey, you're, you, you talk about this all the time. It's like, fill up that first box, which is your appointments. And yep. so I haven't, not kidding ourselves saying, okay, I have 10 appointments. I looked at if I have 10 appointments, I only have seven. 
Yep. Seven if I'm lucky. So making sure I'm working enough time um, is very important. And then not fooling ourselves, taking time too, too off too early. I haven't earned the right to do that yet. That's so good. Yeah, you're right, man. You know, sometimes it's just that you're, it's not that you're spending the time in the wrong areas. It's that you're just not spending enough time. And that, that especially early on, I think is something that, that we've all dealt with and we all have hired agents that that's like, you're just not actually putting in the right amount of time. You're doing the right activities. You're just doing 50% of it. You need to do a hundred percent of it. So good stuff. Hope. Yeah, man. I, I mean, we've all made tons, tons of mistakes, especially around this, this um, time piece, you know, um, I, I, most of a lot of people coming in here have never owned their own business before, you know, yep. and some like myself, never been in sales. And look, just because you can take off Tuesday doesn't necessarily mean you should. I touched the stove a little too many times on that. I want to focus on more of, of some of the mistakes I made when, when I started building a business though, Casey, yeah. um, you know, I, I started building a business in 2014 and I, I made the mistake of not getting with Marshall and putting together uh, Marshall, my well, and my mentor and not putting together a, a game plan session. I just kind of went at it aimlessly. And back then I was using um, Craigslist. We didn't even have ZipRecruiter back then or it wasn't widely used. And I, I would play some ads this week and next week, but I would convince myself I was too busy in the field the third week and I wouldn't place ads and I could never get any momentum going. I, I was never consistent in my time. And it took me to about half that year um, of falling on my, I built two teams to key leader. Both of them fell apart. I was back down to a team of one. That's discouraging for anybody. And I'm like, okay, why, what is going on here? And talk to Marshall. And he was like, man, every time you take a week off of building this thing, you set yourself back three weeks. And it was just this light bulb. And he walked through the, the, the thought process. A lot of it's mindset. Um, but you're, you're, you're letting that pipeline kind of die down. You're never getting any momentum. Yeah. So in 2015, I just made a decision. I wanted to get Stacy out of her job. I got with Marshall, set a game plan. He said, look, it's just going to take more, you know, yeah. more what more interviews. Okay. Which is going to take more time. So yeah. like you, Purdy, I was working 12, 14 hour days, Monday through Thursday. Now, some of you are on the line, 12, 14 hour days. Like I chose to do that. Like I wanted to get, my why was big enough to where I wanted to, that beautiful wife of mine to get out of her job because I was tired of watching her cry. So we did it. We did it. I did it, you know, four days a week. Well, and I knew two things, right? I knew that, that um, I wouldn't have to do that forever and that this system's designed to give me my time back in abundance. Well, what happened because I was putting that, that focused time in, right? In six months, uh, we start, well, really in about four months, we started receiving some overrides. Six months, we had a lot of overrides. I was able to invest some of that money to hire Laura Potts, our first admin. Now I was able to stop working 12, 14 hours a week because she took a lot of the, the important tasks off my plate that weren't $150 hour activities. So now I'm getting the same explosive results that we were getting in 2015. And I was doing it in eight, nine, 10 hours a day instead yep. of 12 to 14 hours a day. Um, so good. So it was just, it was huge. And I, I would say one of the lessons that I've learned, Marshall Whalen was really good at teaching us about was delayed gratification. I just mentioned it earlier when I said, look, we're building this pool eight years in, not yep. the second year. Yep. Like you can't rob your business of, of financial capital most importantly, early on too, is you can't rob your business of the time capital that it takes. Big time. You know, you've you've got to be willing to put in the time and effort. And look, you, you, maybe you join this company because you want balance. You want time and money. Me too, all of us. Mm -hmm. But my life, sometimes you got to get out of balance to get in balance. And look, my life's way out of balance now to, to the fact that we have way more money coming in for the effort that's going into it. <laughs> but when I first started, my life was also way out of balance. Yeah. I had way more effort going in than the money that was coming in, right? Okay. So just just practice some of that delayed gratification, I would say. Big time. I think you're going to hear that theme a lot. Pritchett? Yes, sir. I, I think uh, I, what I'm thinking about is kind of melding the two things that both Kevin and Jacob just, just discussed. And 
um, you know, obviously you, you have to put in the time, you have to seek that counsel, and then you have to make sure that you're you're setting up like what are the things that you're going to do during that time, right? Because yeah. I, I think a lot of us we uh, no one no we, we become business owners, and guess what? It's like freedom, no schedule, like I don't have to do what anybody says, uh, and then you're broke and realize yeah you are you do have to do what somebody says, yep. right? So, you know, one of the things that you shared with me very early on, and I'm not sure where you got it, you know, maybe you made this up. And so I'm just going to say it's, it's straight from Casey Watkins. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, you said to, that you actually showed, I think I was standing in the, the home office with Brian Delaney and you pulled out a, a little folded sheet of paper that looked like this. Um, and you just took a piece of paper, folded it into eight sections. And you said, I, I make a list for the day, do it the night before. And these are the things that has to fit on the list. These are the things that have to get done on this day. Yeah. Right. Like we all, our, our days fill up with tons of stuff. I mean, I don't know how many emails that the, you guys get in a given day, but I know I get a lot. And if I wanted to, I could just spend all day just sitting there going through all the emails. Right. But there are certain things that are important. And you mentioned this earlier. You said you have to have that strong enough why, that strong enough desire. And so those goals that you set for yourself in your business these are the things that if I do these, they will help me get to that goal. They will help me achieve that why. And that's what I want to be putting down. If I'm going to invest my time, I want to, as Kevin was saying, I want to counsel with my mentor, not do anything for the first time without doing that counsel and saying, help me set up my schedule. If I've never been a business owner, or I've never done this before, like stop having your ego in your way and go to someone who's doing it and say, help me line up a game plan for what my day should look like. Right. And that's going to be a, a hourly kind of Google calendar, uh, ASAP planner, whatever you're using in that regard. And then from there, there's still going to be a couple of key things that each day I need to be able to get to my end of day and cross those three, four things off, because yeah. that's what's going to move me forward in the best possible way to, to Jacob's point. The things that matter the most when he was counseling with Marshall about what do I need to be doing? Uh, and so having that game plan uh, and that to-do list, that's really going to help you with that. And as you do that on a regular basis, what you're going to find is sometimes you're going to sneak those low dollar, val low dollar things, uh, low value things uh, that aren't adding to your dollar per hour or aren't adding directly to your business, but they still need to get done, right? Just because they're a lower dollar cost, that doesn't mean they're not important to your business, right? They just not may not be the most important. And that's where you start learning about and being able to delegate to get more of your time back so you can do even higher level stuff. Like my, my goal always is, how can I do more high dollar, high value game? How can I keep continue to push up what I'm doing on an hourly basis, yep. right? And, and start to delegate to other people to help me build my business because I don't wanna be the only one solely responsible for the results that I get. That's why we build agencies, right? It's not just me out personally producing, it's me and a hundred other people, 200 other people. And so using that, like by, by using that list and, and having a game plan of what I'm gonna do each day, it allows me to get more effective and efficient with my time. Then I can start to delegate. And as I'm delegating, I also can lean on symmetry with all the, the tech, the tools, $20 million of investment that you guys are doing into that stuff. Like, why wouldn't I leverage that, right? Maybe I can't afford a, a admin assistant or a recruiter or whatever. Symmetry has tools <laughs> for me to be able to use. Uh, and that should help all of us really level up how we're using our time so that my time can go into the most pressing things, the things that make it to that to-do list on a re regular basis so I can get the most from the time that I am putting in. Of that, you know, I think that the, the summary of all of it is like, you know, if, if, if you do $20 an hour work, you're going to get $20 an hour. If you do $100 an hour work, you're going to get $100 an hour. And so how do I eliminate some of the lower net return work and delegate it? And that the to-do list to start off, if you're struggling with this time management idea, then a good book, um, I think early on that helped me was like books like Eat That Frog. Um, that just kind of speak to this like idea of, and again, this was very, you know, analog, um, not, not very tech digital uh, way of kind of me uh, uh, lining up my day. But what it did allow me to do is to take, you know, A, I carried around with me in my back pocket, Edward, but 
you know, and it came from my dad, by the way, I just always saw my dad, this is how he kind of worked through his day, because, you know, he, he, he never really had a job, he kind of owned a couple smaller companies, but always had lots, to, lots of stuff to do to keep himself busy, and he just paid attention to his list, and for me, how I enhanced it was not only did I have a bunch of stuff written down, but I, I got to understand that, um, and I, this may have came from Eat That Frog, put an arrow by each of your to-do lists in the day, Think about that. Even you don't have to do it physically, but think about the arrows. If the arrow is up or forward, then these are activities that go to actually growing myself or my business. Things that actually are going to put a bigger ROI. If the if it's a dash or a sideways, it's like this is just kind of stuff that has to be done. And then if it's down, it's like these are problems. These are things that like because I ignored some urgent or important things. Now it's stuff I have to go back and fix. Right. Um, and so I wanted to fill that list up with as many forward arrows as I could and delegate the sideways and the down arrows. OK, um, so and I'll just also just say that you guys are spot on. It's producing and it's recruiting at a high level. The best thing you can do for your team, if I'm talking to someone right now on the, in this company, that's it's you and one or two, three, four five running buddies, the best thing you can do is to out recruit and outsell them. If you want your people to do something, don't tell them to do it, show them how to do it. Beat them, lead them. We're not managers, we're leaders. And so the beautiful thing about leading by example and recruiting and personal production is it also gives you the cash flow to start reinvesting. So when we start talking about money in a second, you're actually gonna have some money to reinvest, but you gotta do the most important work first. So let's move on to energy. Um, Purdy, good and the bad, the ugly of, of how you kind of invested energy um, along the way and some of the some of the good ways you did it and some of the not so good ways. Yeah, the ener energy where I, I noticed on the building side where I gained a tremendous amount of energy is working with the right people. Um, yeah. and a lot of a lot of my team have, have come from the warm market. You know, I like these folks prior to symmetry. Um, so I got good. You know, I got good fuel from my warm market. Um, and building is emotional. You know, we spend a lot of our, you spend a lot of your time working with people. And, and sometimes you, you buy their hopes and dreams, maybe more or believe them more than they possibly will. And, and we spend a lot of time with these people. And, and usually I've noticed this happens right around key leader, agency owner, where I have six solid people. And that stops me from recruiting and spending more energy bringing more people in. Yep. Because it's, you know, that's important to me working with them. And I'm, you know, sometimes we find people saying, I'm going to help you get to agency owner. I'm going to work with you. It's my quest to make you agency owner. And you're, you're stealing all your energy. And you're going to get disappointed because guess what? We're in a people business and people will disappoint you. And so then all of a sudden we're disappointed. So now I'm starting to manage people. I'm not leaving. Like, hey, listen, I was excited. I have my six, six bandmates with me or teammates with me to propel me to the next level. And so I spent all my time not bringing new blood in. And so I always look at it as like a sporting team. You know, if, I, if I'm just paying attention to my six people and I'm not out actively recruiting, actively looking for new people. If somebody goes down, somebody hurts an ankle, somebody you know, goes somewhere else, how's, how's, how can my team compete against the next opponent the next week or the next season? Yeah. And so you know, the excitement for me is really new people because it's, you're going through these phases, phases of excitement. We can you know, break that down like, this is really new, I'm curious, now I'm involved. And, and getting people to the committed level, but it's that new person coming out of out of out of a corporate overview. It's that new person that just booked their their first appointment. You know, working with those people, the next big deal, working with 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 the next big person, really fuels me. Because after a while, your your teammates are going to know you like, hey man, yeah, he I've heard that joke before, or I've heard this, you know. And, yep. and it's just and if they're not doing what you're doing you're managing them, you're pushing them and you're not like oh, all right i'll compete with you yep 
it's about hiring enough people and then trusting the motion. You know, instead of spending a ton of energy with people who say they're going to kill it, because that'll surprise you so many times, right? When you interview someone, you're like, I got, I got a guy, this guy's going to kill it, or this girl's going to kill it. They're so excited. They're so fired up, which is a important component that I want to hear in someone's voice in an interview. I want to hear urgency. I want to hear hunger. But I also, before I start investing a lot of time after contracting, you know, into, into them, I want to see motion. You know, that's something that all of you guys had in common. You know, I remember hiring, you know, when we, when we, uh, when we locked arms, Edward, you know, there wasn't a lot of talk, but there was a lot of motion. There was a lot of work. And it was like, that's the kind of person we need to lean into. Because if you start spending your time with the wrong people, trying to get them to do the right things, all you end up doing is turning, trying to turn ducks into eagles when it, it, it's not going to happen. You're just, you're just pushing rope. And it's the biggest energy suck and it's so deflating. And it, it's, I didn't really kind of kick off by talking about how important this component of energy is, you know, time management, what we talked about earlier, sometimes overrated. It's energy management, especially at our level, at y'all's level, at any level of trying to build something, especially energy is so, it, it's so underrated how you do that. And I'm always looking for things that, energize me back. Like I'm looking for ways to expend my energy that also give me an ROI and energy and seeking that belief level of that new hotshot that I just hired. And she went out and she did $8,000 her first week in production and has never sold anything before, man, that fires me up more than anything else in this business. And I want to seek that. I'm trying to get as much of that energy. I'm plugging into those people. Edward, yeah, no, I, I think that's an extremely good point of energy just being underrated. I want to start what I was going to talk about uh, with a, a quick joke. Bear with me. It's, it's a dad joke. So, uh, so Casey, <laughs> Casey, why is everybody tired on April 1st? I feel like that I should probably know. <laughs> like, why? Edward, why? <laughs> because they just got finished with a 31-day march. <laughs> no, okay. No, I know. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's good. But uh, I say that because there's a there's the physical component. So there, there's the physical there's the physical component of our energy level, uh, and that's why we have things like you know the the Quality sixty. That's why years ago we had Money Muscle Mind, um, and and Symmetry. I, I'm very thankful for it. Continues to put out like guys. If if we're not taking care of ourselves from an exercise standpoint, from a sleeping standpoint, eating right, uh, being able to avoid overindulging uh, in things, right? Like th there, there are things that diminish you, right? And the one word that you can say, anyone who's achieved a high level of success in anything that you could call them is that they're very focused. They're, they're focused. They're very focused on what they're doing. They're, they're trying to cut out all of the distractions. And one of those distractions that we can do to ourselves is that distraction of just being tired, that distraction of that, you know, late afternoon lethargy, uh, the distraction of, you know, I can't wake up in the morning because, you know, I went to bed at three o'clock in the morning because I was watching, you know, uh, a Netflix binge for, for however many hours. So it, it's being able to, to say, you know, as I'm looking at my energy, obviously people make a big uh, difference in how you carry yourself and the energy that you can give back and forth because you're feeding off of them and, and, and you're giving to them. But then what are you doing just for your personal energy? Like we, we are physical beings. You do have, contrary to popular belief, you have a limited amount of energy and you can, you can move the needle on that by how you're caring for yourself. And I think this also leads to another thing that if I care for myself in a positive way, if I'm willing to practice self-discipline so that I have the right kind of energy so that I, I, I feel good, I'm, I'm energized, I'm, I'm just naturally happy and enthusiastic. I'm not worrying about achy knees and backs and like all these other things. My mind is clear. I'm not trying to push the brain fog from last night out of my mind every single morning. Yep. Now that same self-discipline then can apply to how I work with people, how I do my business 
all these other areas of our life that we're trying to put an extreme focus on. So that's one of those areas of energy that it took me a while. Uh, and, and again, I'm grateful for Money Muscle Mind. I think that was the first time, like I've always kind of, I've taken care of myself, but like being intentional about that self-care so that I would have the energy to really invest in those people who were also positive energy uh, uh, beacons in my life as well as, as Kevin was talking about. And it's a secret weapon and a lot of people just don't know it. And a lot of people don't get that, you know, how, how you take care of yourself physically absolutely affects your energy level. All of us have experienced that good workout where we come out of that workout and we're just like, man, energy for the day, endless, because we started the day off, right. We got a good workout in everybody's experience what the kind of brain fog comes from eating a number three at Wendy's feels like and what the the difference in you know eating a grilled chicken salad it doesn't taste as good but man the the the, uh the brain fog afterwards isn't nearly as bad and the, the energy suck like all of these things are just habits that you just have to start to to create and that's why the you know, like Edward's saying the quality 60 is so important because if you've never experienced the energy and the sharpness you get from living right, then you just don't know what we're talking about. So we invite everyone to try to experience as much as that as possible. And the beautiful part is it, it kind of, again, it sets those habits. Pogue? Yeah, and I can 100% attest to that, Edward. I, I've been on both sides of that, you know, quite a yep. few times. And, and it was a problem um, for, for me um, in terms of energy for sure. Like you, you said, the one thing about the successful people here is that they're focused and that's right. But if you're only focusing on one dimension of success, right? Like you're talking about investing in your time, your energy, your resources. Like if you just focus on one and you get good at one, then you're going to lack in the others. And for me, Edward, I think that um, one of the mistakes I made was, was on schedule. It really zapped my energy. And I truly believe that a good schedule will help you maintain that energy that you're creating, yeah. right? Like it's a, it's a combination because you can feel as great inside and, and have all that energy, but it can quickly be zapped out of your day if your schedule owns you. And, and that's the way I tell people sometimes, I feel like I built this business out of a book bag. I didn't have any business experience. Yeah. I didn't have a work ethic, right? Yeah. So I just worked harder and in a lot of cases and for a lot of years, a lot harder than I sh needed to, to get results because I wasn't managing my schedule. Meaning I would put the conference calls on the schedule. And when I was in the field, I would put my appointments on the schedule, but that was it. I didn't schedule time for, for checking emails, for working out, for personal development. I did those things, uh, the working out part, not so much early on, but the others, right? Well, then I started growing a team and I started getting, uh, you know, le other leaders and agents. And, and I thought I was doing them a service by keeping white space in my calendar available in case my agents called me and needed me today. And boy, the day ever, right? And the phone calls kept coming and I kept helping them and serving them. And I thought I was doing them a, a service. And then at the end of the day, I've worked all day long and I get off of work, Casey, right? And go to spend time with my family. And I can't carry a conversation with Stacey because I'm mentally brain dead, yep. right? And, and I'm still figuring out what I got to do tomorrow because I left so many unfinished tasks on that to-do list you're talking about. Yeah. And then I made the transition. I, I, I finally got it. It finally clicked when all of my peers were saying, man, you got to have a schedule. I got intentional about a schedule and it changed my life. Without a schedule, my health was failing. My relationships at home were failing. Like it, it, they weren't thriving, not failing, but they weren't thriving, yep. right? When I, when I implemented a schedule, and I mean schedule everything, personal development in the morning, uh, working out, time with my family, you know, uh, scheduled calls instead of white space, time for lunch with my family, like everything. Man, I get more done today and have more free time today than I did in 2015 when I was working 12 to 14 hours a day. Yep. And I do it and I'm energized because Edward, I work on my health in the morning, right? And, yep. and um, I'm, I'm working with the right people, Kevin, right? So not, not energy vampires. And I'm doing it all within, um, within the, the, the schedule that we laid out. So I just, yep. I just think that if, if you focus in, and this is a problem where people hear it all the time, at least I did for years and I never did it. You have to be, intentional and just do it 
just yeah. get to the gym or change some eating habits or, or just look at your schedule and ask your mentor, how can I fit more time? Because look, I've had a couple of people in this team burn out and go backwards. Yep. And, and it's the same people when I talk about schedule, how they're reluctant to change. And I get it because I was one of those people. Yeah. But it's not the system that burnt them out. It's the fact that they just yet haven't learned how to manage the schedule. Yep. So, so glad you're talking about that because I think, you know, something that can happen on calls like this where we're just throwing out so many, to me, like what you guys are talking about, so many just really good nuggets for people to take home. These, this is the real stuff that you guys have done to take yourself from, you know, from where you were to, to where you are now. It's real stuff, what you guys are talking about. But also I leave calls like this sometimes feeling overwhelmed by like the gap between where I am and where I should be, like what I should be doing with my time, energy, and money. And so Pogue, you talking about schedule is kind of that. If you're, if you ever feel like that, that to me is where I always start you. You need to think about your schedule because if you can at least get it on paper and you can put some of these gaps, these areas that you're not maybe playing well in, if you can get them on your schedule and commit to that, it just, kind of takes the, that, that feeling of, uh, you know, a overwhelming feeling away. Schedule will allow that. I'll give you a couple quick things on energy. Um, one it, it is aligned with everything y'all are saying, but especially what you were just talking about, Jacob, scheduling that, like, what is that reward for hard work, smart work? You know, for me, it was like, I, I need an energy award. I need something that takes my mind out of business and gives my brain some reprieve, some, some rest from that. And for me, that's mountain biking for, or for, for, you know, Kevin, it's something different for Edward. You know, it's all of you guys have something different that you kind of reward your brain with. Um, and that gives it that rest. I also think there's a place for that with vacations. There's plenty of people in our company. They're just go getters. And I want to encourage some of those people take a break, like take a week, you know, because of the clarity you get from it, when you're in the weeds every day, day in, day out, grinding in this business, the energy value and the clarity value of taking a needed break is so imperative. So I know we said earlier, you got to earn that break. But if, you, if you're earning it, if you're working it, guys, I'm giving everyone permission. Like at some point, take a few days off, take a long weekend. Like I know that a lot of people are just grinders and they don't do that. So do that. Take care of your brain, give it that rest um, and that, that extra energy. Another thing that will frustrate you around energy um, that's a little bit of a cheat code here is how are you, what are you selling? You know, when you're trying to build your business and you're attracting people to your business and to your agency, what the common denominator is with all of our top people is that they sell the right thing. Purdy is not selling a job. He's not selling a sales job to people when he's onboarding them. He's selling a business. He's selling the result from actually building a sustainable business. He's selling time and money. He's selling something bigger. And that's something as a company that we all try to do is we try to take people's chin from being down here day to day in the sales. And I wanna lift it up as their leader as much as possible and quit thinking about the five no shows that you had this week and start thinking about consistent habits, consistent activity over time is going to get me here. And I'm going to teach you how to get there. I want to pick their eyes up, pick their vantage point. I want to open their brain up to a bigger thinking, a bigger vision. And it's not just about sales. And so the punchline to this is what's your bullseye? When you're talking to your people a lot, if I were to eavesdrop on your huddle ups every week, would I be hearing all about sales, all about products, all about training? Or would I be hearing a bigger story, a bigger vision? Would I be hearing success um, being celebrated around the building front, right? So the key is make your bullseye building and sales will always come. If you make your bullseye sales, sales may or may not come. I can't tell you how many people, how many leaders have tried to go this like, I'm going to just train my people to death, teach them to be the best salespeople ever. Never works. There's never any growth that comes from that. Occasionally a little addition, but never this massive multiplication like you see our leaders get here. So don't waste your energy too much on training and all of those type things that the system already does for us. Plug people into that. 
use your energy in promoting something bigger. Pick, pick people's chin up a little bit. Um, and then I would also just say, you know, sometimes we see people investing time, energy, and money into tech, into their own tech or into their own tools, software, stuff like that, filling some of the maybe gaps that the company hasn't quite built out yet or just replacing some of those or whatever. And I would just, you're kind of missing the point of a franchisable type opportunity. It would be like, it'd be like Edward and, and uh, Purdy, both getting into the McDonald's franchise, right? Both of you pony up your million each. Purdy spends all his time um, with that McDonald's franchise as a franchisee, figuring out, I'm trying to think of the best way to describe this. It'd be like Kevin trying to figure out how to automate the French fry machine to where it didn't need an employee. And Kevin comes to corporate and he's like, I figured out a way to eliminate this employee, eliminate $100,000 a year of, of, of unnecessary expense because I figured out how to automate my French fry machine, <laughs> right? Edward buys 10 more McDonald's franchises, all of which earn him an additional 250,000 a year of passive income. Who comes out better? And sometimes I think people do that here. Like you're wasting at a, at a size in your business and at a time in the company, you are actually costing yourself potentially so much time, energy, and money by getting sidetracked on something that may make the business more efficient. It may actually do something like that but it's not going to compare to growth. It's not going to compare to you building that base shop 50% or hundred percent bigger and getting ears with that and all the stuff that comes from that. It's not going to come close. And so a lot of times when I think about investing, it's where's my safest bet. It's not that investing in some sort of tech or systems or something like that might not help. I'm not saying that I'm just saying, where's my safest and biggest ROI. And so I would just kind of encourage people to understand that, you know, that's the value of having a system, leverage it. You don't have to reinvent the wheel and waste that energy there. Edward, um, any, any comments on that? Yeah. I mean, the, the one thing that I only follow up, give to that is just this idea that, <clears throat> well, you know, I have these ideas and I want to share them. And, yeah. and that's one thing I've appreciated about you, Brandon, Brian, you guys love these things coming up. It may not be the right time for the company yep. as a whole, right? It may, may be that there are other things going on, but what I do know is as bad as it was nine years ago, if you just did the symmetry system, you made a lot of money, right? Yeah. Seven years ago, same thing. Five years ago, same thing. Three years ago, like if you just do the symmetry system, <laughs> it will make you a lot of money. So if I'm going to tuck in behind that, and make a lot of money and get to that point where I can can reinvest because I can do some if I wanted to do some R and D. But like the R and D that I do right now in my business for Symmetry, I always call you or Brandon and say, "Hey, I'm thinking about this. Do y'all want me to go through with that? Does it sound like something we're trying to? Okay, it is. Okay, great. I'll go do it. But like if you, I call you, you're like, "Oh no, we're already working on that." I'm like, "Great, I don't have to." <laughs> you know, then I go back to my Symmetry okay. business and follow the system. And I love that you know. And my heart goes, I'm an engineer. My heart goes out to those people who they want to tinker. They want to like try to get it a little bit, but I get it. I'm that same way. I want to do it too. Yeah. But man, this is just such a good system as is. Can it get better? Of course. And it's going to. Yeah. But what I want to do is make as, make what is it, Kevin? Make as much hay while making hay is good. Is, is that the old saying? Yeah. Right? Like right. do that. And it's going to allow you to invest so much more as those times uh, come up for you to be able to actually reinvest in a way that's going to give you that 5x, 10x return. Don't get, like you were saying in the McDonald's analogy, Casey, I don't want to just get like a 0.5x return. Like if yeah. I'm going to invest time and money and trying to develop something new, it needs to be something that's going to give me 2, 5, 10x, 100x. Yep. That's what we have the opportunity if we play this symmetry system correctly, like you'll get the opportunity to do those things but focus on the things that are just definitively working right now in this system. And it'll, you'll, you'll be amazed at how fast and how far you'll go. So good. All right. Last, per, uh, let's talk about money real quick. Um, good and bad, Kevin. Let me get a drink real quick. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are wearing me out. I need to add some salt to that one for sure. A little salt. Um, you know, this piggybacking on what Edward said is, um, you know, 
when it comes to money in, in, in this business, um, not really communicating and, and, and having real conversations and, and seeking out those real conversations with you, Linwood, Brandon, um, and even other, other you know, leaders in the company. Um, what, what got me in the, when it comes to money is, um, first of all, when it came to leads, I was, I was charging all my leads on a credit card. And so if I'm charging 500 bucks a week on leads, and and we all start out. I know I did like okay. I'm going to pay back the 500 next week with my commissions. But then I didn't do that. I wasn't disciplined. I wasn't focused yeah. enough to do that. That hurt me. So I'd highly recommend that when it comes to your lead budget bill, you know, you're investing that 600 bucks a week in leads. Or are you paying it off the next week? Just that personally, that's kind of what got me in a little hot water there. A lot of hot water. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then with um. You know, really, uh, I, I I jumped too quick, and it was again ego where I wanted to impress you. I wanted to impress um, Brandon and Linwood, and be like, okay, I got an office, I got a staff, and not having that, I I would have that conversation after I did it, mm -hmm. and and it's it's kind of like you know we look at when it comes to money, it's like, okay, in the beginning, I'm talking to you about what my lead budget should be about, what, how my recruiting is. And then once after I'm, I'm, I get like a B student at it, then I wasn't communicating more. You know, yeah. I wasn't like saying, okay, now I wanna, I wanna get an office space. Now I wanna, how do I pay this person? I was like, hey, get, thinking like, I'm gonna impress you and Linwood by saying, hey, look, guess what I did? I went out and got an office. Hey, guess what? The, Guess what I did? I, I hired two people. Guess what I did? I'm 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 totally your guy. And yep. you're like, oh man, I wish. And your reaction is like, yeah, I want to cheer for you in this situation. Yes, you this is a good thing, but not really. And so um, you know, that that communicating in, in my business now, how how I I I I fuel my business is I really you know, one of the things that attracted me to this business is mentorship. And I like, where, when should I turn left or right? And I noticed early on, I said that, but then I wasn't doing that. And now to this day in my business, I am making sure that before I you know, make a, a move, I'm talking with my mentor saying, hey, listen, this is what I'm doing. We, I, it happened three months ago, like mm -hmm. office space. Hey, I've been at this space for three years. I'm thinking of this. What do you think? Yep. You know, and exactly. just and operating on instead of saying like this is what I think, what do you think, Casey? Yep. Edward, what do you think? Linwood, what do you think before I yeah. move? Man, it's so because there's landmines everywhere, especially you know, all of these time, energy, money, there's landmines, bad investments everywhere. And uh, you know, so many ways to screw this up, and only a couple good ways to win. And so you're just counseling like that, you know, the golden rule that we've always kind of talked about sometimes in this company, our cardinal rule would be like, you know, I'm never going to do anything for the first time without checking up first. I'm going to make sure I'm not getting ready to step into a landmine that could potentially cost me my, my business, you know, something that's hard to come back from. Um, and, and, you know, we kind of call it autopsy versus biopsy type stuff. Like, like you said, like, it's not, well, I already did it. What do you think? <laughs> we can't help you now you already did it you already signed a two-year lease or whatever so um yes yeah, so good counseling um Pogue? yeah man um i'm gonna go circle back to you know one of the mistakes that that i made early on on the building side which is um not investing um not investing enough. Like uh, we all have to start where we start i remember starting with 200 dollars a month was my recruiting budget 50 bucks a week. Like I had to start somewhere. Um, and, and I kept that going for a little while in 2014. And I, like I said, I wasn't getting many results. So I, I learned that um, for me personally, and now I teach this principle to, to all the leaders and builders on our team. I, and, and write this down because I think it's one of the most valuable lessons if you're building a business that it'll help you so much. And that is your recruiting budget needs to be ever increasing. And what I mean by that is, is, you know, we all have to start somewhere. Maybe you start with 10 ZipRecruiter cities today. Well, every 30 to, to every 90 to 120 days, you want to be re-examining what your recruiting budget looks like. 
Because if you're doing this thing right and you're, and you're focusing on all these things we talked about today, you're putting the right amount of time, energy, and finances into this thing. In 90 to 120 days, you should start popping out two, three, four, sometimes five writers, you know, 90 to 120 days from now. That's going to generate, generate revenue in your business. The mistake some people make is they take that revenue and they go buy, um, you know, something for themselves. What I started to do was I would take that revenue and increase my budget. I would go mm -hmm. from 10 zip cities to 20, from 20 to 30, from 30 to 40. Eventually, you're going to max out. You can only do so many interviews in a week, right? Well, so what we were able to do um, is eventually hire, once again, Laura Potts. We were able to hire recruiting staff is another way to invest. Like once you're, you're kind of maxed out with your time, you're spending some of your time dialing to book appoint interviews. You're spending the rest of your time doing interviews. Well, that dialing to book interviews, you can hire that out and have a recruiter do it. So I would just say one of the most important things that I changed that, that, and I still do this today. I'm still finding other ways to invest in my business, Casey, with, yep. um, and now I can help create recruiting co-ops where I can make that cost of, of um, for some of my, my, the people who are doing all the right things. It's now I can subsidize some of that, like you do for our leads. Sure, yeah. I can subsidize some of their recruiting costs. So they're able to have someone free up their time, energy and effort. So, and that's why we're, we're exploding. You know, the principle so that, that's someone in a position, again, going back to delayed gratification, that I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not stealing from my business. I'm not eating the seed. And, you know, if I do get to the point where I can, you know, I want to start dabbling in the pools and the cars and stuff, I'm going to make sure it's, it's not taking away from my business, you know? And so that delayed gratification, man, that's such a big point. I think so many people, so you can go out with us and you start earning a hundred, 150,000 a year passively. And you start going, man, you know, always wanted a Ferrari. That car payment's only fifteen hundred a month or two thousand a month or whatever. Like that's that's a very small portion of my business. That those decisions start to stack up on you, you know. And so, not saying I, I love cars. I, I I I love nice cars. I love nice things. Love nice homes. But I never am going to let my business come even anywhere close to being affected by my personal choices in my what I want. So, um, Edward, same thing. I just say before yeah. I jump to Edward and just kind of give y'all kudos because I think a lot of the top leaders here have that same principle and are are, are pretty responsible with their with their money. And it comes from I, it, you guys were talking years ago about how you keep your income, you know, your your standard of living here, yeah. even though you might be, you know, you're paying yourself here so that yeah. you never have to make decisions based on the the lack of money. So you never have to rob your business. You know, y'all are not living. Um, you could have a jet, you could have all those things, you know, but, but you don't do that so that you can take $20 million, invest in technology for this company, you know, and, and I'm grateful to y'all for that um, because we all are the ones that benefit yeah. from y'all being responsible. Well, and your teams benefit from you guys following suit because, you know, it's not just about during the good times. It's also during the bad times. You know, stuff hits the fan sometimes out there in the economy and the world as we experienced this year. And if we had went out there because we could afford the jet or the yacht or whatever it is, but bad times fall upon us. And now we're actually having to make decisions that affect all of you guys with the company because of our wants behind the scenes, not a good position. I don't want to be having to change things in the system because we made we over, you know, we kind of got a little ahead of ourselves out here on our personal side. So, um, Edward. Yeah, no, I, I think these are some very key points. Hopefully people are hearing this. And one thing that I'll um, kind of push in on a little bit more is this ideal of, of not eating the seed of your business. One of the things that I started doing, this was back in like 2015, uh, was one as commissions came in, and I don't even remember who, who told me. I know I got it from someone. And if it was you, let me know and I'll give you the credit. Uh, <laughs> but to set aside 30% of the income that comes in, and I would do it every day. Like when the deposits came in, I would move 30% over here so that there was stuff for my business. And then on counsel with my accountant, Brett Hansley, he was like, you know what? Most business owners, they have a salary. 
They don't just because more commission came in this month, they don't make more money. You're not a sale. You're not in sales anymore, right? You're running a business. I was still doing sales, but all of my sales, even my sales today, my sales go to the business and I have a salary and my salary. Actually, I have not increased my personal salary in the last year and a half. Why? Because now the business gets more bloated as far as the amount that it has to be able to then go and reinvest which means guess what? Whenever I do my personal salary review, right? I can give myself a raise, but too many of us give ourselves raises all along the way. And we're not thinking about the business as a business. We're we're still in that self-employed quadrant. And if I ever want to be a business owner, I got to treat it like a business. So that would be one quick thing that I would put out there. And then the other is just this ideal of investment. Right. Um, You know, as you start making money, there's so many things to invest in. And I firmly believe that your symmetry business is the most the the biggest bang for your buck until you get to the point where you can actually have people, staff that you hire, that you're able to delegate to start doing anything and everything that you're doing to make sure your business runs. Because what I see is people step away and start doing all these other things. But they leave, who, who's left to run? You know, the ship is going without a captain because yep. you're out here trying to do this investment over here, trying to start this over this. And, yep. and, and over here, you, you don't even have a staff person at all. Yeah. And, and it's like your people start needing your time. But, oh, you, you're trying to do this investment thing over here. Do, like at this point in time for my business, I'm already up to nine and we're getting ready to hire our 10th staff person yep. just to run my symmetry business so that I can do some other things. But if I didn't have those people and I go back three years ago, four years ago, five years ago, when I had a staff of one and two and three, right? Like I was still extremely focused on everything that I'm doing on my symmetry business because yep. that was the only thing that paid the bills. I only just start. I mean, here in the last two years and, and you know this because I talked with you about what I was getting ready to start yep. investing in and the next steps that I was gonna take as Kevin was talking about earlier. I only started doing that then when I had a staff of seven to make sure that my symmetry business did not lack for anything. Exactly. Yep. And, and so that's one thing, you know, that that salary, you know, think of it as a salary cap. <laughs> Give yourself a salary cap uh, and let your business really be very well funded. And that's going to pay dividends. And then uh-huh. keep yourself in your business until you actually replace yourself, until you uh-huh. actually have someone who's doing those things. Uh, yep. to keep your business growing, whether you're there, you, you make it that system that Symmetry allows us to be able to do. So, so valuable. And you're right. And you start making that money, all of a sudden you start having opportunities and investment opportunities outside of insurance fall in your lap, you know, and how do you know when the right time is to start diversifying and kind of maybe getting into some of that? And like you said, Edward, it was, it was you know, not, it was two years ago or, or, or less that you actually started to really, you know, kind of diversify and play in that I quadrant a little bit more. We want as many of you guys to get to that I quadrant where, you know, you got the B quadrant, that's other people's time. You're leveraging other people's time using a system. That's how you're getting your passive income. The I quadrant is you're putting your money to work. You're going to get to the point where when you have leaned into that B quadrant enough to where you will graduate to the I quadrant. But so many people start to diversify too early. They start to start making real estate investments and investments in this other business and this and that. And they start dabbling at a very young age. Maybe they're only doing, you know, a hundred thousand a week or even 200,000 a week of, of volume. It's just, you're kind of probably starving your business if you're making any sizable investment out there. And if you're making any investment outside of that, it would, it, it, it ain't sure better be something that is fairly cash flow hands off. Like, you know, you got to watch what kind of investments you're also making when you do start to diversify. But man, such, such good points around, around you know, how to invest financially. Um, you know, I think that delayed gratification is good. I know a lot of you agency owners um, got a survey from us about office space. I think personally, I think it's a good investment to have a structure, have a place. It's not mandatory or necessary. There's plenty of big leaders in our company that don't have offices. But if you're the type of person that probably would thrive a little bit more in a structured environment and some of your teammates certainly will, you know, having a home base there, we're going to, we're going to probably dig into that a little bit more as our, you know, we talk about our future, you know, the value of, you know, our company having brick and mortar all over the country is probably a, is probably something that we're, we're going to lean into a little bit more, but um, 
yeah, good stuff, guys. So, and I would also just encourage everyone, like, pay that debt off, you know, before you start getting into, into the, the nicer things, you know, when you start getting more money in your pocket, like, make sure you got your debt paid off. That would be the first thing I would start to tackle. It's hard to build wealth when you're paying creditors, you know, 10, 15, 20 points. It's, it's hard to build wealth when you're back on your taxes and you're not ahead. So get ahead on your taxes. Make sure those things are kind of there. Don't make the mistake that myself and so many others made where you just start to get eaten up by penalties and interest and all that junk. You got to get ahead on that stuff. And so before you start using some of your money for the nicer things you want, what about, what about that stuff? You know, are you tackling that stuff? And, and, and again, please, guys, like, I know I, I know I always talk about like, you know, the Ferraris and stuff like that and, and how we're, that's not what we're about. And, and um, I feel two-faced sometimes saying that because I love Ferraris and I love nice cars and I love nice homes and I love all of that stuff. It's, it's just, I love having nice things. Sarah and I have a very nice home. And, um, you know, and I just think that uh, if those things drive you, great, use it. And if you're always delaying it, it you know, if you're always living for, you know, if you're always kind of delaying today for tomorrow, then there's never a today. So take that with a little bit of balance there that if you've got yourself to a position and you really have always wanted this thing, then do it, you know, but counsel first, let's make sure you're not doing it too early and you're putting yourself in a bad position. So um, man, there are so many other things we could talk about, but we didn't want to go for much more than an hour and a half or two hours today. So thank you guys for staying with us. Um, we'll keep we'll keep this kind of stuff up. Um, time is now. The place is here. So that's why we're talking about investment, guys. Um, Edward, Pogue, Pritchett, uh, Purdy, <laughs> the three Ps. Thank you guys for jumping on and sharing with everyone that the comments are blowing up with how good of a call uh, this was. So thank you guys for being so generous and talking about your, your good and your bad and investments. Thank you, man. All right, guys. Let's have another good week. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Okay. Paul Purdy, Pope, and Chris.